What defines a low cow? Many would say the definition of a low cow is an eccentric individual with an online presence that is very exploitable, therefore susceptible to harassment and trolling. But, but what, what truly defines, defines a low cow? Can I get a round of applause? How many kids went on to get 4.5 million YouTube subscribers? One. Steven uh, Williams! He's probably beating off right now. <laughs> he's probably beating off. Oh, oh, yeah, I get to say that on the internet. Damn! Yeah, keep it up, assholes, because guess what? One day I'm going to get laid by the hottest of age goth chick that's biologically female. And it's going to be consensual and she'll be alive. And on top of that, y'all are going to be jealous because I ain't going to say shit about it. Oh, I was actually coming out here to pick up a cupcake. A drink I would share with my girlfriend on Valentine's Day because pink champagne is classy. <laughs> Excuse me. Now, with the carbonation from the soda pop and the champagne, it's probably going to curdle with these last four, but... If you walk upstairs and find the lounge, which is the most popular place on the estate to enjoy some me time... Nope, oh, still got a little bit at the bottom. If you guys want to help me pay for my Tesla, please go ahead and dig deep. I sure would like a free f***ing Tesla. Nothing upsets me more than 99.9% .9 of the time, my fans will not pay for anything. Not even my music, not even photos in public. I really need to make this money. I really want to get concerned. I wanted it so fucking bad. about my house! Look, listen! I can feed in you. I don't care if I die as long as you do. Laying dead on my front lawn, oh, I'm sending you home in a body bag. When I bury you, I, I will feed in you. Not because I'm going to kill you and take pleasure doing it. There are many, many pictures, clips, streams, videos, and hell, even documentaries that will truly take you down a deep, deep rabbit hole of every locale that has ever existed. However, not many have chosen to look into the shallows where the fish sleep. Eight fish come into the tank. Eight manatees come out of the tank. This showed a fish tank. Did you see that? Fish tank is fish tank. Fish tank is a reality show live stream. Twisted social experiment game show vibe. It was almost like a Big Brother type of thing. It's a reality show oh. in a similar vein to Big Brother. It's squid Game. We're eight contestants. A house full of uniquely strange contestants. This battle for six weeks. It's put into a house with no outside contact for six weeks. The rules are stay inside, no weed. It's with a camera in every single room. Age. There's a bunch of cameras here. Five nights at Fred. It's like five nights at Freddy's. And one winner walks away with $10,000. This is Fish Tank. Fish Tank has had its fair share of low cows. Take S off Fatty or Chris for an example. I brought up by the infamous iDubs documentary Full Force that would shed some light on this charismatic enigma, making this poorly gentle, lovable character that we would soon follow into the future. For so proudly we fare as the trials last week. Oh, oh, I got nervous. Sorry, I got nervous, people, my bad. Let's just do this. Do it, ready? Unfortunately, Airsoft Fatty started to have some bad decisions and controversies that would soon form the traits of a low cow. Creeping guys, and I gotta try to be open with you guys for things. But when I'm open to you guys, I talk to you guys a lot of times, I get torn into and made you feel like shit. Like with the recent Fred thing, for fuck's sake, if y'all really are gonna keep going on about that shit, yo, 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 yo. And yep, oh, my keyboard, oh my god. I'm gonna say this again in a female voice to try and maybe get your mother. <laughs> <laughs>
have to listen. I haven't. Airsoft Fatty hasn't had to buy weed in nearly six months. Airsoft Fatty has had a very steady supply and hasn't had to drop a single penny. Almost all of his weed is free, and Airsoft Fatty never has to put in a single cent. This has been your lady. Lady Facts here to fuck you. Because clearly when Airsoft Fatty tells you, you won't listen. So maybe when you horny motherfuckers hear a female voice say it, maybe just maybe, just maybe you'll listen. With all this pressure, he would even call out iDubs for help. Sometimes answered and sometimes not. For help that day, and he had never fucking replied. You want to talk about some shit? I messaged an iDubs the other day. I said, hey, can you just share my stream around? I didn't ask him for money or anything. I said, hey, share my stream around. I looked at the message and never fucking replied. You know what? If that piece of shit ever needs my fucking Rick, help again, he's Rick, never Rick, giving it. Well, that's not completely true, is it now, Chris? It's crazy, but I'm so shocked that he dissed iDubs. Like, like iDubs like sent eight hundred dollars to Fatty to like pay for his rent, like privately. He and I just know this. He j he sent him eight hundred dollars to pay for his rent. However, the saving grace of Jet Neptune and Sam Hyde that arguably took out the man of many many flaws decided to take Airsoft Fatty under their wing, starting with fish tank you want to go on a show where you can get like a month of free board and like make some money i said what do you mean he goes the sam high kid he's doing this show he calls it fish tank he says it's like jackass meets you know full house type of shit if you can get out here he's gonna put you on and everything you'll have a place basically if you can hold out if you can deal with this for a month you'll have a free place for a month and you'll be making money and i said you know what Fly me out. Let's do it. Because I was like, yo, you should have Airsoft Fatty in the tank. I, and I'll get him there. And he was like, oh yeah, you know Airsoft Fatty? I was like, yeah. And that's legit. I flew him out. I paid for his flight. And we got him to the, the house. And that's, it was very organic. And, you know, just kind of happened the way it happened. At the time, Jen and Sam probably didn't know what to expect from Airsoft Fatty. But neither did I when I was in the tank. But this extremely degenerate version of Big Brother actually formed one of the most wholesome moments that included Airsoft Fatty and one of the most intimidating mans of all time. I mean, he is a doctor after all. This actually is one of the most memorable moments for seasons to come, and it should never be forgotten. Jet. But soon after this, the uh, true presence of a lol cow came out. Massaging you? Oh, okay, I'm like, it looks like poop stains, and I got scared. I need left the f alone. Bag back now, or shit's gonna start getting broke. Okay. Now, I have no clean clothes now. Since Fish Tank, SL Fatty has been praised by Sam and Jet for his work and has even been used in future MDE projects, streams, and hell, even came back for season two. Meanwhile, during this entire time, bad decisions and controversies would arise from Chris. Podcast and a stream key we did a few months ago were just randomly taken offline the other day, and one of Kiwi's channels was hit with a copyright strike. A false copyright strike, may I add. So, Chris being Chris, he packed a tote full of wet clothes, uh, dab torches, headphones, all sorts of random sh And inside the tote full of wet clothes that was sitting in my garage for two months was the f***ing remains of his parents covered in mold and all this sh that had been growing, God knows, since he packed it before he left for fish tank. So I had to go through the tote because at first I, I I didn't even see his parents were in there. Should I should I go through it? And literally Chris said to toss the tote 
Like, if I hadn't taken like an extra few minutes just to go through the damn coat, I could have been responsible for technically throwing away Airsoft Fatty's parents, dude. So you get it now. Low cows, fish tank, manatees. Do you go and get it now? In this video, we're not going to be talking about the low cows that have gone into the tank, but we're going to be more talking about the low cows that have gone out of the tank. And I don't know how to start this video off better than talking about Simmons. You can talk to the kids you like, maybe kiss them, and uh, I don't think the count on those social nights, I don't think the counselor would care if you are kissing or having fun with each other. Ah, uh, yes, Simmons. See, um, Simmons came on Fish Tank Season 1 as a contestant that many were probably interested in seeing where exactly he was going to go in the competition. Some even loved him from the beginning of the show for farming content. Hey, Simone. Don't be needing that foreskin anytime soon, will ya? You can have it, Dr. Gober. And eat it while it's in my plate for dessert. <coughs> and tomorrow morning, you're going to do it again. Put that plate. Put that foreskin in my and do it all over again. And you're gonna dip that foreskin in my and Run, Vince! Run! Yeah, get in that Mexican boy's underwear, dog. <laughs> but that didn't last too long. See, as an internet reality show, internet being the key word here, people started to dig through all the contestants' online and personal lives. They would look into every nook and cranny of every corner of the internet. I mean, no one was safe. Not even the house, but Simmons? Boy, oh boy, didn't they just find something. <laughs> Alright. Yes, he's gonna go. First. Simmons. Simmons. <laughs> yeah, he's pretty <laughs> You're ruining your voice if you sing without a warm up. Do this instead. I'm seven years old. Penis, 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 penis. Good afternoon. Today I'm going to show you how to properly put on a condom. And uh, on those social nights, I don't think the counselor would care if you are kissing or having fun with each other. Submissive Sissy Sus Simmons had a very interesting background, and it wasn't long until the fans discovered this. Whether it from Twitter posts, Instagram posts, TikToks, or a very questionable range of Amazon books that were created by him, including one about being a camp counselor and how to get away with hooking up with campers. It wasn't long until this information got out to the producers. You can talk to the kids you like, maybe kiss them, and uh, I don't think the count on those social nights i don't think the counselor will care if you are kissing or having fun with each other that then let the tts's come through for the contestants simmons stay away from that baby it's too young for summer camp i give simmons three years before he is found across the border with an eight-year-old you can probably date someone like if you go to camp i get around the rules to date at summer at camp, camp like for kids uh, no, they're both for, both for, like, counselors and kids. What the fuck? Since please address the allegations with the other fish shameful display. Uh, the allegations of the other of, fish uh, was fucking shame count crown. Oh, oh, no. Do you believe that? I do. Yeah? yeah. Do you don't want to yeah. What's your uh, question? What they were asking. So you don't want to say that, you don't want them, you don't want to ask them what they ask. No, no of course you ask them to print out the book so we can all read it. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. okay, ask them. Right now? Yeah, ask them right now. Yeah? Yeah. So you believe them instead of me? No, we're all interested. All of us are Yeah. And eventually, would be confronted by the man who was very vocal about this. Okay. Even, just let alone the offense that to me, like the idea of you Baba Bowie. Project, how stupid. How Baba boy. stupid can you get? Thank you. Mom, is there an, argu uh, an argument to be made for the logical distribution of CD? Baba boy. Stop! Is it Simmons' book? No! 
I just keep excerpts, I keep excerpts of books that I like. There was a counselor who worked for a camp decades for decades. Everybody loves him, but he got fired because he offered drinks to underage girls and allegedly f***ed her. Here's how to do it the right way. And I don't know, what is the right way? What's the, how, how does that, where does that go? Referring to. What's this picture of this like, uh, 11 year old? It says into long legs. And, uh, by the way. This is the picture that is. Close. Eviction status incomplete. Oh no, but I don't want to Shut the f up. So Simmons had two options disappear or try to rectify these accusations, which, at first, he did do the latter, until being pressured into the former, because there's no point. You're done, so. But you have the winky yeah. face and the sexual hashtags and the. Uh stuff like that yeah it's supposed to be it's supposed to be a joke about long legs you know like because nobody will want a you it know says, like, it what? says juicy booty on it do you have any, that's the any joke. comment that's on the, that the joke is the juicy that, booty no the, that, the joke is, no the joke is no the joke is if you're an adult an adult and you look at a, a kid with really long legs you're not supposed to into it i might and find you and beat you to it, death well, well, that was kind of rude. And yeah, what I'm saying, <laughs> what I'm, what I'm to... how old were the um, kids counseling in question? Uh, at the summer camp? Yep. Uh, they were uh, they were teenagers, and uh, they were from like eight to sixteen. Eight to sixteen. Okay. Go. I'm curious when you were outside of Letty and Vance's room. I think it was the last night, maybe, and you were talking, discussing the book. Um, they had some questions for you, and you seemed nervous to describe what the book was. I don't know what were you worried that they would find out about it, or what was your thoughts then? So, uh, was it last night that we were discussing about the content of the of the of the counselor book? Yeah, I don't. Well, yeah, I was wondering because you seemed hesitant to describe it further to them when you were outside oh, of the room. I was, I was, because uh, I I was hesitant because I don't want to disclose where. It, where, which camp that I went to. Okay. I'm, I'm just trying to make sure everybody's on the same Yeah, everyone's on the same page, yo. Simmons Shoe. Hmm. Why does that name sound so suspiciously familiar? Simmons, I'm gonna need you to have a seat right over there. And that was pretty much it for Simmons, and we never really heard from him again. Like, that was about it. But, wait, wait, wait one more minute. Just wait a second. There is one more thing. Applying for Fish Tank wasn't just a one-off application. Months after Fish Tank had ended, another show called Prank Panel with the hosts of Eric Andre, Johnny Knoxville, and Sassy Black Lady would be pitched of potential pranks from individuals who want to plot elaborate acts of comedy and revenge on individuals in their lives. If the judges like the pitch, they plan, perform, and record the prank. A lot of these pictures were pretty damn trash, but one takes the cake. Hello. Hello. Hey, how are you? How are you doing? How are you doing? What's your name? Uh, my name is Simmons. Simmons Zoo. Our old friend Simmons is here to tell you about how his life got flipped upside down. I'd like to take you a minute right there and just tell you how Simmons became a pedophile with a roommate that watches car crashes. Well, who do you think about pranking Simmons Zoo? Well, I want to prank my roommate Sam. Why do you want to prank Sam? Because he's a little nosy, you know? Like, the other day he was, uh, there, was a, there was a car accident outside, and then the second he hits the bang, he drops everything, every, he, everything he's doing, and just walk outside and see what's going on. And I feel like this is something that, you know, like, you know, that, that I could have some fun with, and then, you know, have you guys have some fun with as well? So. <laughs> yeah. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, but what? I've seen this bull get hit by bulls and I've never seen him this uncomfortable. Yeah, this was filmed well before Fish Tank, but you can feel the same atmosphere that this guy brings to the room. It's that instant, get this guy out of here. And they did that. Kicked him out with the exact same manner. The taser. Oh man. <laughs> I have a great idea, what's going on? Yeah, I have another idea. <laughs> Since then, Simmons has tried a few times to squeeze himself back online or even into other acting roles, but it doesn't take long till the spider runs back under the rock. And fortunately, with the fan base outing him to the public, we may never hear from him again. Okay, 
like yeah. really be like the rent is too soon. Yeah, did you not spend your money on stupid stuff again? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> when he laughed. Did you spend three hundred dollars on a plane ticket for a reality TV show to go across the country and just to get kicked off for your camp counselor books? Yeah. See, Simmons is a low cow, manatee you could say, but it really depends how you see it because he's not a very active low cow. Shh, 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 shh. Simmons is still very active. During the editing cycle of this video, I found out that Simmons is still very active on Instagram, though he doesn't have that many impressions and hell, he even gets more views than John at this point. Ayo! But, uh,. Yeah, he's still insanely active on Instagram and still doing weird shit on there. I thought I would put it in because people will call me out for it, but there's nothing really worth talking about here. So back to normal programming. Though I would categorize him as one with the pride he has what he sees is right rather than wrong. However, with Simmons first to leave, it wasn't long until the next cow would follow. Mario was the roommate of the suspected. He's a child molester! Ah! 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 But during his time in the tank, he didn't do too much moving out of the room before leaving the show. Mario was so boring. In the show's intro of the edited episodes, the most interesting concept the artist Tristan Zamet could come up with was sitting and reading twice. Who would you bet on who's going first? Well, I mean, it depends what kind of challenges they are. Um, you know, if they're physical, then maybe I'll go first. <laughs> if I'm going to give Mario some credibility outside of this, it would be the sassy Mexican guy that everyone thought was Hawaiian at first. His departure was on day nine, the exact moment that Simmons was outed as a uh, Jeffrey Epstein enthusiast. Alright, so a lot of eyebrows were raised, no doubt about it, that a lot of people were speculating why he would leave so fast after Simmons' old history was dug up. Was there something there? No. Fortunately, the only things I could find of Maru was that the man could be suspected as an AI robot. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Nevertheless, was out and free in the world to greener pastures and would even We're begin to gain a social media push, even going the onto the news to talk about his time on the show. show. The hate comments really didn't, didn't affect me. I thought it was yeah, more funny than anything. In my personal life, I guess it just made me more stronger. It seemed like he was on the up and up. However, one fatal error, and that fatal error was feuding with Frank Castle. Did you hassle him at some point in in like no I no well, before he, he was on he, the when he, tank? When he left, uh, he made a tweet thanking everybody, and I said something about him quitting, and I felt kind of bad about it a little bit, so I deleted it. But I guess he saw it, and uh, I don't know. I as a, as an observer, I think people quitting is it's kind of lame a little bit. That's all. I can sense you, Frank. Who's Frank? Who the f is Frank? Frank it was. Tweeting at me. Frank. Frank. Some Frank. Frank Castle. He was like, you left. That was like your excuse to leave. The Simmons thing was like your excuse. To be honest, the interactions are pretty shit, but it is notable. Even Frank got a little bit bored of the interaction. But it wasn't long until Mauro would arrive back on the show 20 days later on day 30 to become a freeloader. As he probably realized from his first stint, he would have to create some content. However, there was only enough room for one cow in the house. I broke the f fish tank too big. You bought a fish tank. This <sighs> you gotta put your clothes on. <laughs> I don't have anything specific in mind, but I guess just messing more, more with Chris is a piece of shit. Are you accusing me if you didn't f***ing know I'm talking so much shit? The steak those in the fridge with my name on it, they got from Loot Crate. What? Yeah, that's gone now too. Bro, why are you blaming me for everything? Like, you I said I'm blaming you, I'm asking if you know anything. 
I gave you your fucking fish butts as a like fucking, because I told you I'm gonna say shit like to your face. I gave you your fish butts because they were next to my fucking suitcase and someone was trying to fucking frame me. And I gave them Mara, to you. Me? If it wasn't me, I'm I was, not saying that you were messing with me or anything it, about it. I don't know shit. That's all you're not fucking saying. Okay, well, don't yell. You don't need more fucking tears. Okay, well, don't fucking yell. Like, first, it was for real. Yeah, <laughs> nah, you don't need slap, man. You don't need slap. I'm not oh, I'm a little bit of fucking fate. You're not gonna faint. I am. His slap was heard around the world, but it was like a bat signal because it wasn't long until another return was on its way. That's straight up The legality thing is really not something we should get into. It's a fucked up show and like, it's just really fucked up, but we're gonna take care of it. Like everything will be okay. Everyone's gonna walk away. We're going to take care of the whole situation. Like, nine more days? <laughs> there he is! in your face? No, you threw a thing on my face. What, the door? No, no I didn't mean to the door. You, the f thing that was getting the wolf fell on my Oh, are you okay? You good? You gonna slap me? No. Really? What happened up there? What's happening? Tomorrow. You're leaving? One little tiny hassle and he was out of there and he got chewed up, spit out of the community as everyone told him how much of a bitch he was. That slap could have been a turning point for you, Mario, and you could have turned your new heel persona into something that would have been talked about for seasons afterwards, but it's just embarrassing looking back at it. You know, your time on Fish Tank is so bad, for seasons to come, people will point out a boring ass contestant and say, that's the new Mario. I know pe I know there's like love for Mario out there, but he was not a dynamic poppin'. He's great. I love him. He's great. Okay. Yeah. But if you had a house if you had a house full of ten Moros, it would be called the No Viewer House. What's worse is you doubled down on being a douchebag when you got out of the tank because it gets you views and I understand that. However, without any credibility, now you're just a whiny little bitch online that barely interacts with anyone. That's your legacy. Your views and interactions with what fans there are, far and few between. If anything, I feel sad for you. Pathetic. Months later, after the edited episodes came out, he thought he would finally get off his ass to do some edited episodes himself, where you would show some highlights of your 15 minutes of fame, which unfortunately stop at 30 seconds. <laughs> Can't fucking make this up, eh? <laughs> However, I do want to talk about the part where you talk to the camera and explain the reason behind leaving was because it was wild and you were living with a predator and didn't leave because something the fans might have dug up on you. You guys, welcome back to my channel. So we got a nice glaze of grease running along the lines here and here. Very cute double trin. Like, oh, it's weird that Mauro left right when this a guy got kicked out and it's like, they're saying that maybe there's like something weird around me or whatever, but it's been six months since the show first aired. So if there was something weird, then it would have been found out. <laughs> and I would never be on, like right after I left the show, I was on social media for like uh, always. I've always been on social media. So and then I went back to the show later on. So if I have something to hide, then I wouldn't be on social media and I wouldn't be going back to the show. So let's use our two brain cells for those people who are saying that. This was something that raised a lot of eyebrows at the time. And Mario, you never responded until this video. Maybe there is, maybe there isn't. We will never know because Mario is the most boringest person alive. And I doubt anyone cares about him enough to continue digging. 
I mean, by the way, Mario, great content. Keep it up. It's complete boring as batshit, but at least you're giving it a shot. Considering these days, all we get stuck with is complete streaming slop. You know, I added you to this list because I knew the fans would have been like, yo, where's the one on Mario? Mario's a lol cow. But in reality, man, you're, you're literally one of the most boring as fuck. I, I couldn't hit that point anymore. You're that fucking boring. The next person is a little bit different. See, unlike the last two people I've talked about, Simmons and Mario, the next person is clearly, clearly a fucking manatee. And that person is fellow freeloader, Betty. I want to introduce you to our new friend, our fellow freeloader, Betty. <laughs> so, my name is Betty. I am 25. I'm from Hamilton, Ontario. And basically, I'm here to replace Letty. Ah, uh, yes. Fellow freeloader, Betty. Hell, even is on my little poster that I've got over here. Look at that. Look at that shit. Well, how the times have changed and everything ages so fucking well. And no, I won't be talking 40 fucking minutes about Betty doing a piss in a helmet. What's wrong, Betty? You got something to hide? If you guys aren't familiar with Betty, she was one of the freeloaders that were a clone of Letty that lasted two days onto the show. But those two days were enough for her to garner a fan base, mainly because she gave what fans wanted. What, did you actually think I was going to show this? I mean, I I could. There's nothing there with mosquito tits here. Oh, by the way, Betty, before you call me out for being a gooner, I just want to clarify this. I've always thought this about you. you Baba boy. Child. But this picture, this act, sure bring out the sex-deprived fan base of MDE. But I'm not going to lie. At the time, when I saw Betty, I was kind of like, damn. That's pretty cool. She's a lady clone, I'm advanced clone. We could have created content. Hell, maybe we could create content outside of the tank, but that never came to intuition. And no, Betty, that's not why I'm making this video. I'm making this video because you're a piece of shit. It wasn't long until she started streaming on Twitch and it looked good for the most part. Hell, even raided iDub's Twitch stream and mugged him in the process, which I thought was complete fucking badass. Beat him up, beat him up, beat him up. This thing is loud. Warlock? What are you doing? What's that? What are you doing? What's loud? Oh, raid. But did Betty think so? She actually looks like she had some uh, sympathy for iDubs, being a light-hearted raid, not an intentional mogging. However, if you see down at the bottom them, she she tends to throw some shade at the hand that feeds her. And maybe it's just a one-off. Maybe it's just a one-off. So, things were looking bright for young Betty. And around this time, the show had ended. And the after party came with Jet, Josie, Letty, and Tax. And maybe there was more of a crowd, but most importantly, Betty. A day or so passed after this after party with a stream of Sam, Jet, Letty, and Josie. Talking about fish tank and whatnot. But what happened when there was a question about Betty flashing those zits? What was your initial reaction to Betty flashing the camera? No comment. Oh, 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 animosity? Maybe. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it brings me to the first chapter, Child Mind. I've deleted my Discord. Uh, it's done a lot more harm than good. Um. You guys are probably thinking, what the fuck is this bozo talking about? Child mind. Well, let me fucking explain. Around this time, a lot of the fans were smashing everybody's inboxes and DMs just to know a little bit more about the show, what Letty smelt like, what Josie smelt like, what the fridge smelt like. It was a lot of smelling questions. It was too many smelling questions. Stop asking me about these smelling questions. It's been one whole year. But, you know, it was from curious fans to get legitimate people trying to pin something on Sam and Jet. But most of us kept quiet because out of respect for the show and the show runners. But, uh, good old Betty. This is a leaked Discord chat that she had with her community about the show behind the scenes and the after party. 
At the time when this got leaked, not a lot of people looked into it. After I looked into it a little bit more, I've got a few things that I need to show you. So we're going to decipher this extremely cropped screenshots of Betty's Discord, and I'm going to show you some context behind them. First in these screenshots, Betty is talking about how Jet and Letty are complete arseholes. <laughs> Forced to say Black Lives Matter on an Instagram live video, but instead says All Lives Matter or No Lives Matter, refusing to say it. It's kind of a goofy bit at the start of the stream where Betty looks a bit uncomfortable saying Black Lives Matter. <laughs> You word? gotta. Betty, you gotta say Black Lives Matter. Black Lives. Uh, no, you know what? No lives matter. No, not that nihilist approach. You gotta <laughs> say Black Lives Matter. Okay, they matter, kinda. Just say it. <laughs> say the words Black Lives Matter. BLM, right? <laughs> say the words Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter. <gasps> she said it! Betty said Black Lives Matter. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta hit a few shots after that one. <laughs> wow, it took that much out of you. You're like drains now. <laughs> However, Betty makes it out to be that she was held at gunpoint the way she writes these. Jet handed me the phone and when I was streaming at their place said I needed to tone it down a little bit. If I didn't say Black Lives Matter, I would be broke. What the hell are you even on about? Even if Jet said this, it's clearly a f***ing joke. Remember, you're on Fish Tank, where every sentence was the butt end of a joke or a gaslight? But I'm, I'm pretty sure even if this wasn't a joke, I couldn't really imagine Jet saying this seriously. Besides, unless they did this bit in another stream, I didn't see anything you said through your Discord rant. It was like you were forced to say it by Jet. She started to talk about her, which I'm guessing is Letty. She's claiming that Letty has dentures. What are you on about? The only person that has extremely fucked up teeth is the person writing those messages. Miss, I have braces at 23. By the way, I find that absolutely insane. She does not look like she's 23. She looks like she's in her 50s. She looks like what the Australian government would slap on a packet of cigarettes. She goes on with this hate for Letty, saying she's that she's ugly or didn't really deal with anything in the show, which honestly had me questioning if she even watched the show before she went on. It's just weird, because she's missed out countless weeks of where she was getting destroyed, absolutely destroyed, by Frank Hassel, Daniel, John, S of Fatty. You literally cannot talk, Betty. Literally, the moment that Mari put stuff on your bed, you were Baba boy. out of there. By the way, it's another lie. A bloody tampon with his bare hands, twice. Do you realize what a live show is? We would have seen that ourselves. Which, which begs me the question, have you watched any clips of yourself in the show? I don't understand that. People would have been so quick to fucking call you out for this shit, but there's so many damn simps in your fan base, it's not even funny. This, in my opinion, is Betty's Mario moment can dish it out, but can't fucking take it. Which actually shows when you kick someone out that was backing Letty up. She claims that Letty was on whippets and cocaine and was extremely fucked up. But in my opinion, watching back on this Instagram live, I think you're the only person who's extremely fucked up. Which brings me to the next thing. She starts to talk about the whippets and partying like it's one of the worst things ever. A lot of people judge Jet for this, but if you ask me, it's a bit of a breach. I was there. I wasn't there at the party, but I was there at the show. These motherfuckers were getting like three hours sleep. They were running the entire show. They literally were in a basement, sleeping in a fucking basement. Not to mention that Letty and Josie literally got absolutely destroyed, annihilated for the last three days to win that prize money. Of course they want to like let their hair down and party, but Betty's acting like this is like some drug den. Betty just comes off as a giant party pooper in these streams and legitimately trying to turn the fan base on Sam and Jet is one of the biggest and dumbest moves I've ever seen you try to pull off. Well. We'll get to some more. My theory is Jet thought you were chilled at the time right up until the after party. And that's when he realized that he invited someone from the Arkham Asylum. She actually doubles down on this leak, posting her memoirs on a whiteboard, which I can only describe as <laughs> schizo posting. Literally a diary of an insane child's mind. 
I've actually met people like this, people who are extremely edgy and will cross the line, but when it comes to normal social interactions, they fail and blame everyone else. This is literally Betty, but besides a few back and forths with Mario, no one really called her out for this. I think this is like one of the clear first signs that Betty wanted to make the entire fish tank community as her own, but it failed. And when it failed, she got pushed into a corner, apologized for it, and hell, even made this stream that she deleted moments afterwards. Small, tiny little bit of a detail here that I feel like no one's picked up, but Betty seems to always use her headset microphone as a microphone and tends to use her real microphone as a stand. And the only thing I can think of the reason why she does this is because she still hasn't figured out how to use her good quality microphone. She's a dumb bitch. The drama. Okay. Today's going to be like a 10 minute stream formal announcement PSA. You are going to see me have an emotional breakdown so buckle up i've written this all out most part so i wanted to start off by asking you all stop bothering jet and all the other all the other fish production everyone else about all the the shit that i talked about it was all supposed to be funny but it was taken well out of context who's bothering him so jet was kind enough to let me to let someone like me on his show but i took advantage of that and i upset a lot of people i'm not gonna why am i gonna call them out although i did not at the time think that what i was doing was wrong i'm able to recognize now that i've caused a lot of which i have i've caused a lot of distress i've caused a lot of problems it's done it's over i've deleted my discord it's done a lot more harm than good I just don't feel comfortable proceeding until we get past this this drama. I don't feel like a good person. Very fucked that I said what I did. Even though a lot of, like I said, a lot of it is taken out of context. A lot of, you know, things were taken a different way, made to be lies that supposedly came out of my mouth. In the stream, she actually claims that a lot of the discord is out of context and it's not all that it seems. However, Betty, if that's the case, why did you do the schizo whiteboard and why did you take so long to make this claim that they're extremely out of context when you still to this day do this kind of stuff? I don't think it's out of context. By the way, Betty will make the claim that this stream has been edited down to make it look bad and any interview and podcast that I'll use in the rest of the video has been like out of context. But in reality, a lot of it is just this. Um. Um, any, um, 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 and I shouldn't have, um, uh, um, um, um. This is literally Betty's response to the entire part. Um, um. I've always been an edgelord. I have a need for shock value. I was famous on Tumblr for a while for fucked up shit before the FBI got involved. They identified me as a terrorist. Someone I was involved with happened to shoot up a school in Florida and they came after me pretty hard for that one. Before I continue and move on from this Instagram live video, there is something that she does point out. Check Betty's Tumblr. Do you have Tumblr? Oh yeah, I have a really fucked up Tumblr. Oh. Well, well, how is it fucked up? I mean, you don't have to talk um, about it. A little bit of context to this, a lot of fans found her old Tumblr and uh, this is literally her response. Because like they banned me and I had like 14k followers. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. for like a dark humor account and um, they banned me and I got really pissed off. So I just found like the most porn I could find and just mm -hmm. reposted it when they banned porn. And um, sorry to disappoint by the way. This absolutely makes no sense. It just sounds like an extremely weird way to cope over about the fans finding your Tumblr account. So essentially she's claiming that her dark humor account got taken down. So in retaliation, she made a dark humor account. But that dark humor account that's already up there is satire and shouldn't be taken seriously. Right. That's basically the whole story about it. It was about like um, right before the Parkland shooting mm -hmm. or whatever, I made like uh, some joke like about a school shooting or something and then they Cause it was like a dark humored account and um yeah they banned me and i was like at like the top of my shit there and i was really pissed so 
but yeah were you like a tumblr girl oh yeah big time but they banned me from that and i was like so pissed off so, well like, i had so many followers and stuff and like i had like the funniest account i mean tumblr kind of sucks now anyway oh yeah Since it definitely they, does that's like, why it like fell i love to just go on there and troll all the time are you like a hey girl are you it was like a valentine's day one it was like hey girl are you a school because i want to shoot kids in you and like it was right before like the parkland shooting like on like the february 14th or whatever and then they banned me from that and then that's how like yeah so i got really pissed off with tumblr and there's like a whole like <laughs> this excuse is so fucking bizarre it doesn't hold up in any fucking way you put it she's literally coping about her fans finding about her tumblr account and it's hilarious trying to see her downplay it. Look, Tax's face says it all. Oh uh, man, this bitch is lying. Also, don't bring Sam into any of this. Sam and Jet practically work like separate. They, they work separately um, for the most part. Sam is, <laughs> Sam's a good guy. Sam does not litter. I don't have any beef with Sam. Um, it was just a bit. Since the after party, the schizo posting and apologizing for all of it, you would think Betty would just move on from it. But she actually doubles down. She decides to comment on every Sam Hyde post and base her entire personality off what Sam does. It's kind of like a Simon says. If Sam calls someone out, so does Betty. If Sam does boxing, so does Betty. If Sam interacts with someone, so will Betty interact with that same person. The biggest example I can give of this is when Sam interacts with a content creator called A Little Bit of Toddy. I just don't... I think it's like porn though. Like mm -hmm. disguised as like something no. cute. I don't think it's pornographic, Chris. Yeah, I mean you... Anything can be porn. Like yeah. this microphone could be porn if, if you wanted to come on it. Absolutely. <laughs> this chicken tikka masala could be porn. Mm -hmm. If you come on it. To put the hammer through there. Bam! Bashing the wall apart. Oh, Whoopsie. She's outside now. Glory hole. Oh, sexy. Yeah. She's got to put some. Oh. Oh. No. oh. She put the picture. Over I the think hole. that's clever. I think that's yeah. pretty. That's pretty funny. I agree with Sam. There's nothing wrong with this. But when Betty saw it, she thought this was a great opportunity to leech off the fucking interaction, calling herself a little bit of foddy. Sure. A light-hearted parody, even got the approval of Toddy, but probably decided not to collab with Betty once she found out that she was batshit crazy. Though when Sam stopped these interactions, so did Betty, and it's just embarrassing seeing her do this. It's like she's trying to stay rent-free in Sam's brain. It's 100% pick-me energy in the most sad and pathetic way. Don't get me wrong, there's getting inspiration from Sam Hyde and MDU, but then there's literally stalker daddy issue levels. But there's some rumor that Sam is my dad. No one has said that. That was a Navy signal. He wasn't Sam Hyde. Like a lot of people think for some reason. You're just pulling the piss. Speaking of which. sure that everyone thought this part was coming and including Betty because she legitimately thought that this entire video was going to be about pouring piss over her head but I digress. Betty with her growing fan base decided to make a Patreon and the uh, top tiers were quite questionable. Essentially the top tier would be one video per month where she would post a video of her doing piss play. Yes that's right actual urinating videos. So if you're a bit lost why this came about, I'll give a little bit of context. Letty, the contestant, her whole gimmick was being the piss witch. And this all came about when she needed to go to the toilet in the cell challenge and coming out that she had IBS. So she was attracted to pee pee and poo poo play. Fantastic. I don't, I don't know what to warm piss. <laughs> Obviously anyone with a brain cell would realize that this is a gimmick, a gag, an inside joke, but Betty on the other hand with one brain cell and two watermelon seeds took this legitimately. She has started off attracting people to her Patreon via pissing on top of a cop car, which isn't a cop car, but on her Patreon she decided to one up it, top it, 
by pissing on a trampoline, then pissing into a helmet and pouring it over her head. Content. When this leaked by Twitter user Skull Hide, Betty went on a fucking rampage, deleting and blocking anyone that was associated with him. Because that's the real problem here. Not you, is it? Obviously, it wasn't long until her Patreon got taken down for this kind of material. And, and now she acts like that this never happened or it was completely fake. And Betty, if you think you have any credibility past this, you're what? wrong. Even Betty herself clarifies this in a stream. The fist helmet thing. I'm not taking back the fact that I made a piss video. I made a fucking piss video. It's a hundred dollar helmet. I didn't actually put my piss in the helmet. I put water in the helmet. Why am I gonna waste a hundred dollar helmet? But I think that's exactly what someone would say if they did piss into the helmet. No, she's actually gone out of her way to post Twitter videos of the full length version of this, but we'll delete them moments afterwards, so... Yeah, you got me. You got me. You convinced me that it's real. The piss helmet thing. I'm not taking back the fact that I made a piss video. I made a fucking piss video. I don't actually understand why Betty does this. She legitimately will post something or have something controversial, but won't at the time, not in the heat of the moment, clear things up. It will be months later. It's, it's kind of ridiculous. I don't understand the logic or the strategy there. Maybe someone in her fan base could probably tell her this isn't the smartest thing to do when you're on the internet. Maybe. The point I'm making is that I don't understand everyone that you blocked that was associated with Skull Hide or anyone that you blocked that brings up this matter, then uh, you realize these people are going to forever think that this video is real. You do know that, right? You, you do know that, right? Is this some kind of 4D chest or some shit? I'm not taking back the fact that I made a piss video. I made a fucking piss video. You kind of need to look at the bigger picture here because Betty is taking clear satire and sarcasm from Sam Hyde and Letty and turning it into a legitimate thing that she's into or, or putting it out there to make it seem like she's into this stuff. By the way, her hate for Letty, in my opinion, is kind of unreal. She tries to top Letty in every single way and even legitimately trying to convince people that she does piss play, which is insane to me. Any mention of Letty's personal life or her ex-boyfriends, Betty's there like a fly and shit. I don't have STDs. Yeah, right. I've got rashes from putting on These ex-boyfriends have been outed by the community and honestly, I feel like they should just be like forgotten at this point. But the moment they're mentioned, even slightly mentioned one single bit, Betty is there. Even the slight mention of them during the John and Sylvia stream, Betty was there the very next stream. So what happened? Betty, in my opinion, is an absolute parasite and sucks the absolute worst of the fish tank community and adds it to her own. She even at one point decided it was a great idea to poke the fun out of the death of one of Letty's fans that had just passed away. This guy isn't just like Letty's fan. This is the Letty's night. This guy was up and hooting and rolling in every single space that it was put in. The point I'm making, this wasn't just a Letty fan, this was THE Letty's fan. Are you sure the Tumblr account is a joke? 
It's just funny because you back into a corner when you've taken it too far and fans call you out for it. She acts like everything's just a big joke. Even to this day, she would delete posts where the fan base is completely against her. It's very pathetic. You're terminally online, get help, your parents failed you. There's a lot of stuff that I can share and tell you about Betty, but at the end of the day, I want to hit this topic hard because from all my findings, from her post fish tank behavior, her identity crisis, her Patreon exclusive videos, and her excessive use of the, it's just a joke, it's out of context, bro. I think this is the worst. It all comes down to her telegram and Having a telegram in the first place is sus enough, but what she's been posting and how she's interacted with her fans is truly disturbing. With her Patreon down and for whatever reason not being able to start her OnlyFans, Betty started to post her nudes, lewds, and any machine that she could use. No, obviously, I can't show you the majority of these pictures and videos, nor that I want to. But there's something that I find a little bit odd. The stuff that I found, I find extremely questionable because she tends to dress herself up and present herself as a minor. I'm generally curious and wondering if Betty is self-aware that the fan base she's gathering from these nude ludes and videos are a bunch of pedos, predators, and psychopaths. Or is this just another reach? Is it completely normal for someone to present their room like this act like a minor, dress up like a minor at 23 years old and post nudes in that manner. I personally think she's trying to appeal to the disturbing side of the fan base, but hey, at least she's not hurting anyone, right? The one thing that I've left out in this entire video, but it, it's very apparent, Betty cuts herself. It, it shows through every picture, through every video that she's ever posted. The entire time that we've known her from fish tank and out of fish tank. You can see it. So much so, a lot of contestants and freeloaders and other people that were on the show have come forward to tell me about this and have told me it's the worst they've ever seen. However, over time, she's become less and less self-conscious about this and this all culminated when she started her telegram. Betty herself started posting more pictures and videos of her cutting herself, but what became even more disturbing is when someone else, one of her fans, started posting their cutting pictures, she would post this. Now, Betty has actually come forward and confronted about this a month later to say that this isn't the case. She never, ever egged on fans. See, Betty, I would believe your side of the story if you gave a full screenshot of the entire conversation, but you never did. And in fact, when I went back to have a look at these conversations, they weren't there. They were deleted. They were gone. And what did you say about Cass? And now John comes out with the screenshot saying that I'm telling people to hurt themselves and hurt themselves further by calling it weak. That's not what fucking happened. And everybody who was there can back me up. Everybody who was in Telegram, even as far as last night, saw when Cass got banned. Even as far as last night, saw when Cass got banned. Even as far as last night, saw when Cass got banned. I find it very bizarre that that's the case and you stand by this story. However, this story has a lot of holes in it when I show you the other screenshots. See, that's the thing, Betty. You always come out and confront fans or people like me once shit gets a little bit heated. But you only confirm and try and make a story out of one thing. What about all the rest of the screenshots there? To me, your story doesn't hold up. To me, it does look like you're egging on fans. If you are egging on fans, why do you take so long, so long, to confirm this, to have some proof, anything, nothing. You just try and hide it all the time. In my opinion, you're guilty. You are trying to cover this up so badly, it's insane. 
so badly anyone that questions this you will go out of your way to try and destroy them when john called you out for this prior he generally was worried about you but you made it out to be that john was being extremely clingy and persistent about you going on to his podcast it just wasn't the case. At this time, I was keeping a close eye on Betty's telegram because I was generally curious if she was going to do something fucked up. So I'd be checking it every morning and every night. But one morning, I woke up and found out that Betty blocked me. I was very curious about this, so I went on to her telegram and that's when I found it. Betty legitimately was trying to dox John and frame him for being a sex offender. Doxy's name, age, address, businesses, business addresses, and anyone else that associates with him. Seeing the amount of information that was being shared between Betty and her followers, I decided that this was going to be a dox of ill intent. So I intervened and confronted her and her followers through Twitter. And this is what she had to say. Absolutely fucking nothing. But one of her fans did come forward under the name of Biggest Dumbass Alive, which would justify his dogs. Yeah, not illegal. I never questioned that, but ill intent, just like I suspected. You really think that John is a sex offender just because he met up with Summer? Okay. What? See, that's your problem, Betty. Right at the start, you legitimately pushed away all these people away from your fan base. The same people that doxed you and your family, that doxed your name, your real name, your past, everything, and you have bring them back in slowly, one by one. That's the thing, Betty, you think you're smart, you're thinking you're playing 4D chess, but Every time someone confronts you, you literally mass purge whatever it is. You mass purge the Discord, you mass purge the Patreon. You're now mass purging the Telegram. When I was making this video, I kind of didn't want to go so harsh on you because I legitimately thought there was a chance of you offing yourself. But now I truly understand that you do everything for attention. So go fuck yourself. At this point of my research, I decided to look back and reminisce Betty's time on Fish Tank. And I realized there was a lot of things that Betty did on the show that wasn't some act or something edgy she was trying to do. Betty didn't play a character in the show. This mentally unwell person that was trying to do her best to get the fan support of the worst part of the community. I think a lot of us were pretty blind about this, and I think everyone thought it was a character like the freeloaders before. Bringing up Letty's ex for content, flashing her tits and feeling insecure, having a mental breakdown in the house. You absolutely are. If you bring somebody on who's mentally ill to exploit that mental illness and make content, and something goes wrong, you absolutely are responsible for that. I agree with you, Betty, because since your time on the show, we've had people like Summer and Lanely on season two. And maybe that's another story for another day. See, fortunately, Sam and Jet have dodged huge bullets, but eventually they're going to have to do background checks because of people like you, Betty. So what's next? You can talk to the kids you like, maybe kiss them. Let's use our two brain cells for those people who are saying that. I made a fucking piss video. I want to give my final thoughts on this video and more importantly Betty because in my opinion Betty is everything that's wrong with this community let alone the entire internet. What she's currently doing for her telegram in my opinion is the likes of Max Million or Isabel Janky. If you do know who I'm talking about Betty hasn't reached to that level just yet but she's on her way to. There's a lot of other stuff that I could dish out and put out there into the public about her telegram but i'm going to use that for a future if she decides to fuck around see we only know what betty's like online we don't know what she's like in her personal life and to be honest it could be much much fucking worse than we know it she deserves to be forgotten and anyone that promotes her stuff should be outed for it legitimately betty go fuck yourself that's pretty much the end of this video i think a lot of people thought this entire video was going to be about john and maybe in the future he will get his uh an entire feature just done on him but uh since making this video i've noticed that a lot of the people 
that I set out to make this video on, like Simmons, Mario, Betty, and hell, maybe in the future, John, they've all gone quiet. In fact, even Betty herself has got her account suspended. So I don't ever expect this video to blow up. It's just to put this, it's just to put these people out there because they're extremely fucked in the head. Well, maybe not Mario. I feel like I went a little bit harsh on Mario. They're legitimately the only reason I added you into this is because people asked me to, so. I'm not gonna apologize for that. I know a lot of people are gonna call me out for using Jet in my thumbnail, and the only thing I have to say to that, it brings in a lot of fickle fans. I think a lot of dumb fucking people in this community need to watch this video, 100%. And the only way I'm going to bring a drawer in is putting Jed on the thumbnail. Like, don't expect me to use Mario. Like, come on. It's, uh, it's just YouTube 101. But Jed, if you're watching this, I really don't have any ill will against you. And um, maybe I'll put you in the end credits. I can't add that in. The whole purpose of making these videos is because I feel like people should police this community. And you know what? Sam and Jet gave these people a platform. And I'm here to take it away from them. So, until next time. Watch out.